The region of Winton in central Queensland is unearthing more dinosaur fossils than any other place in Australia. In fact, it's fondly known as the dinosaur capital of Australia. Today, the region consists of semi-arid floodplains and a few mesas, or flat-topped hills. But 98 million years ago, the region was very different. It was covered in rivers, lakes, floodplains, and temperate conifer forests. The climate was warm, wet, and temperate, and Australian dinosaurs were everywhere. Hi folks, Andrew here. Welcome to Prehistoric Australia. Join me today as we learn all about Winton's ancient ecosystems and the amazing animals like the Australian dinosaurs that live there. A prehistoric environment is called a paleoenvironment, and there are a number of paleoenvironments in the Winton region. Now, in order to understand these paleoenvironments of the Winton region, we need to study the fossils and rock layers that are found in the Winton formation. These layers consist of sandstone, mudstone, siltstone, and coal deposits. They cover a massive area across Queensland, South Australia, and New South Wales, and have been dated to the late Cretaceous period, between 101 and 92 million years ago. Many dinosaur fossils have been found in the Winton region because the clay-rich soil, known as black soil, has a habit of transporting them up to the surface every year. Where did these sediments from the Winton formation come from? Well, let's find out. Originally, the Winton area was underwater. From 140 to 99 million years ago, the Aramanga Sea had dominated central Queensland. Rivers flowed down from the volcanic mountain range that ran along Australia's east coast. These rivers carried thousands of tons of sand, silt and mud inland and dumped them into the Aramanga Sea. When the sea retreated for the last time 99 million years ago, these sediments filled the basin left behind. These volcanic sediments of sand, silt and mud transformed the Aramanga Sea into an endless expanse of floodplains. The same floodplains that the Winton dinosaurs marched on. From 98 to 92 million years ago, the climate of the Winton region was warm, wet, and temperate. Now, firstly, we know it was warm because of the fossils that had been discovered in the Winton formation of crocodiles, dilichosaurs, and turtles. These animals struggled to survive when temperatures are below 16 degrees Celsius. The Earth was also much hotter on average, because carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere were around 1,000 parts per million, in contrast to today's 400 parts per million. Secondly, we know the climate was wet. Around half of the annual rainfall happened during the wetter months of the year. That's 630 millimetres of the 1,300 millimetres of average annual rainfall. Meanwhile, the dry months dropped to an average rainfall of 268 millimetres. Despite the slight fluctuation in rainfall, there was no extreme distinction, such as wet and dry seasons. Periodically, however, climatic events, known as El Ninos, did have an impact on the local weather. Some years they caused the Winton region to experience more intense rainfall and cooler temperatures. Other years, it suffered through hotter temperatures and sometimes even droughts. Finally, we know the Winton climate was temperate and not tropical because the region at that time was in the temperate zone, at 50 degrees south, further south than Melbourne is today. Therefore, the climate of the Winton region at the time was not cold, but it was warm, wet, and temperate. If you were camping in the Winton region during the late Cretaceous period, you would not only see dinosaurs, but a variety of animals and plants living in several distinct paleoenvironments. All of these paleoenvironments were situated within a winding river system as big as the Amazon River system today. This Winton River system was covered in temperate conifer forests, floodplains, and billabongs. So let's have a closer look at some of these paleoenvironments. Temperate conifer forests were widespread across the Winton region. But the types of plants that inhabited these forests really depended on the part of the Winton region you were looking at. These distinct plant communities arose due to a number of factors, including the layout of the land, soil quality, 
and the frequency of natural disasters such as flooding and earthquakes. Take the forest canopy for example. The canopies were dominated by different types of conifer trees, including aracarias, podocarps, and cypress. Aracarian trees dominated the Lark Quarry fossil site. Fossils include cones, branches, and foliage. These aracarians experienced very little natural disturbance, as they were positioned close to a stream, rather than a lake or a river. Meanwhile, the understory was not dominated by conifers. Instead, it consisted of Benetitalis, ginkgo trees, horsetails, and cycads. In fact, the Winton Formation is the last time horsetails and Benetitalis turn up in the fossil record of Australia. The Winton region was also inhabited by flowering plants called angiosperms. Now, angiosperms probably migrated from the equator down through southern Gondwana and then up into Australia around 125 million years ago. The Winton Formation represents the oldest record in Australia of flowering plants successfully co-dominating alongside conifers. One of these Winton angiosperms was Lovelia wintonensis. Its fossil flower was found in fossilised peat. That's right, even leaf litter from the forest floor has been preserved. There is possible evidence that insects were feeding on angiosperm leaves, given that one leaf has what appears to be bite marks on its upper edge. Insect fossils in the Winton Formation are pretty rare, but they would have been abundant in Winton's conifer forests. Dragonflies and scorpion flies hunted overhead, while beetles and cockroaches foraged in leaf litter on the forest floor. Insects were almost certainly hunted by other forest-dwelling animals. Culprits may have been dinosaurs, such as Silurosaurs. No skeletons have been found, but there are footprints belonging to small Silurosaurs at the Lark Quarry and Snake Creek track sites. These sites also feature footprints belonging to small plant-eating dinosaurs called ornithopods. In fact, the Lark Quarry track site appears to tell the story of a herd of over 150 ornithopods and silurosaurs that left the cover of the forest to gather at a stream, perhaps for a morning drink. Then something disturbed them and scattered them in all directions. Perhaps it was a meat-eating theropod or a large ornithopod. Whatever was the cause, this stampede is frozen in time. The Lark Quarry track site features over 3,000 dinosaur tracks in what represents the only example in the world of a dinosaur stampede event. The dinosaur stampede event took place at the edge of the open floodplains. Mudstones and siltstones indicate that floodplains were the most dominant environment in the Winton Formation. These floodplains were prone to, well, flooding and earthquakes. A surprising result is that podocarps were the conifers that flourished on the floodplains. Their fossils are common at a fossil site near Lavelle Down Station. Podocarps grew fast and could spread across areas prone to disaster, such as floodplains. Australian dinosaurs dominated these floodplains. Some dinosaurs were generalist enough to wander between the different paleo environments, provided there was enough food. One of these gemless dinosaurs was Australovenator. This megaraptorid is Australia's most complete carnivorous dinosaur and the only predatory theropod that has been described from the Winton Formation. Australovenator was six meters from nose to tail. The bones of its legs and feet indicate that it was not a sprinter like an emu. It was only built for short bursts of speed. Then its long arms and curved claws hugged the prey. Overall, Australovenator was an opportunistic ambush predator, but some dinosaurs were just too big to hunt. The Titanosaurs. These gigantic, long-necked dinosaurs include Wintner Titan, which grew to be 16 to 17 meters long, Savannosaurus, which grew to 12 to 15 meters long, and Diamantinosaurus, which grew to be 15 to 16 meters long. Perhaps the most impressive titanosaur though, was the recently described Australotitan. 
measuring 25 to 30 meters in length, it was the largest animal living on the Winton floodplains, and is currently ranked as one of the top 10 largest dinosaurs of all time. Many of these titanosaurs coexisted in the Winton region, but evolved to occupy different ecological niches. For example, Savannosaurus and Diamantinosaurus lived on the floodplains. They evolved wide bodies, flexible vertebrae, and strong front legs to successfully navigate the muddy and slippery floodplains. Trackways that were possibly made by either Diamantinosaurus or Savannosaurus have been discovered at the Snake Creek track site. These trackways demonstrate that these titanosaurs traveled in herds. In fact, the Snake Creek track site has been aptly named March of the Titanosaurs. At 54 meters in length, this track site is the largest sauropod track site in Australia. High above the floodplains were flying reptiles called pterosaurs. One species of pterosaur that has been discovered in the Winton Formation is called Ferrodraco lentoni. Its skeleton is 10% complete, representing the most complete fossil of a pterosaur so far discovered in Australia. A crest perched on its snout, and it had a wingspan of 4 metres from wingtip to wingtip. Ferrodraco would have soared above the floodplains, searching for its next meal, somewhere in the rivers, lakes and billabongs far below. The final paleoenvironments were the freshwater rivers, lakes and billabongs that covered the floodplains. Winding rivers crisscrossed the plains, as indicated by sandstones. When flooding wasn't happening, these rivers were an idyllic home to many freshwater creatures. Lungfish, for example, lived in the rivers. Their fossilised tooth plates have been found. For lungfish to survive here, it must have meant that the river currents were typically slow and gentle. Lakes and billabongs, on the other hand, are indicated by claystones and siltstones. All of these freshwater environments were home to small creatures, such as ray-finned fish, freshwater bivalves, and gastropods. These small creatures were fed upon by larger predators, such as turtles and semi-aquatic lizards known as delicosaurs. But even these animals were prey for crocodiles. Crocodiles ranged in size from Isisfordia, which grew to about a metre in length, to the recently described Confractosuchus, that grew up to two and a half metres long, large enough to prey on small dinosaurs. We know that because of a remarkable fossil of a baby ornithopod dinosaur inside the stomach of Confractosuchus. Billabongs were sometimes death traps for dinosaurs. We know that because the Diamantinosaurus specimen known as Matilda was found in claystone. This meant that it may have come along looking to quench its thirst, but instead it became stuck in thick mud. The more it struggled, the more it sank into the mud. The Australovenator specimen, nicknamed Banjo, was also discovered in close proximity to the skeleton of Matilda. Australovenator was too small to bring down adult titanosaurs, but it may have been looking for an easy meal to scavenge. As a result, it may have been killed by the struggling Matilda. Or given that Banjo weighed half a ton, he could have become stuck in the mud as well. We may never know what truly happened to Banjo and Matilda 95 million years ago. A chain of events led to the disappearance of the Winton dinosaurs. 92 million years ago, the volcanoes on Australia's eastern coast stopped being active. This meant that no more sediment was being carried by rivers into the Winton area. As a result, the sandstones and siltstones of the Winton formation ended at this time, 92 million years ago. So what happened next? Well, the problem is without sediments, we don't know for sure. There's no fossils after that time and very little geological evidence. So what we think happened was in central Queensland and the Winton region, there was a very long period of weathering, uplift and erosion until about 55 million years ago. Now, by that point, it was the age of mammals and the non-avian Australian dinosaurs were long gone. You know the story, the death of the dinosaurs, the most famous mass extinction of all time. 66 million years ago, 
an asteroid 10 kilometers wide slammed into the Earth with the power of a million nuclear bombs. A global cooling event followed and lasted for thousands of years. Evidence of this asteroid impact includes the discovery of its 180 kilometer crater off the coast of Mexico. Also, rock layers rich in iridium, which is an element common in asteroids, but not common on Earth, have been discovered all over the world. Surprisingly though, these rock layers haven't been found in Australia, but there are iridium rock layers found in the rocks of its neighbor, New Zealand. The point is that there are no fossils of non-avian dinosaurs after 66 million years ago. The Australian dinosaurs and the Winton floodplains they called home had disappeared forever. Thanks for watching folks. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Prehistoric Australia. I hope I did the Winton formation justice. I always enjoy recreating ancient paleo environments. I think it's a really underrated thing to do uh, as everyone usually focuses on the dinosaurs. So hope you enjoyed this uh, amazing, lovely recreation. Now I do have a question for you. What do you think will be the next big discovery out of the Winton formation? I reckon that very soon they're going to make a discovery of a fossil mammal. It's just waiting to happen. So let me know what you think will be next discovered out of the Winton Formation in the comments below. Also make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. We always appreciate your support. And if you do want to support us on Patreon, you can support us with as little as $3 a month. One of the perks of donating just $3 a month is that at the end of each video, your name gets a shout out. So here we go, big thanks to our patrons, Tom Capitani, Kim Daniel, and Ella Fuller. Thanks for your ongoing support. Alrighty, thanks folks. We'll see you next time.